to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. No weapon fashioned, he said. Weapons don't just come, they are fashioned. No weapon fashioned against me shall prosper. That's what he's thinking. Hmm. Deuteronomy 28 from verse 1 and 2 And it shall come to pass If thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord To do and observe all that I command you this day Then you shall be exalted above the nations of the earth And this blessing shall come upon you and overtake you The thoughts of God for my life but my head as thou exalted like the horn of a unicorn. I am anointed with fresh oil. His thoughts for me. Are you getting what I'm teaching you now? So you begin to compare what you believe. Or what culture has told you. Or what people who are not born again have told you. You compare it with the mind of God. We buy into the mind of God. By opening up ourselves to the word of God. Why do we study the word of God? Why are we so passionate about the word of God? Because we desire to know what he intends for us. And if it does not look like what we are seeing, we have the ability to petition heaven and say, Father, you are thinking something else and my life is reflecting something else. It is, if you do not know the word of God, what are you praying then? Because the word of God becomes... The legal basis for you approaching heaven. There is a disparity between what you are thinking and what is happening. Something is threatening your majesty and your might. As mighty as you are, you are thinking good. And yet I'm seeing evil in my life. And God says there is need to correct it. Someone is changing the equation somewhere. And he said an enemy has done this. Now you can pray and engage all the forces that were given to believers to command victory through intelligence because you have detected by knowledge that something is wrong. If you do not know what he has said, you will not even know what is wrong with your own life. Listen, if we are seated here right now and there is a rule in this place that every time we gather here, a bottle of minerals, for instance, or soft drink, and maybe muffins or meat pie should be given to everyone you are aware if you sit down here and you count two three hours and nothing is coming you have a right based on that knowledge to find out who is responsible because i am aware but if you are not aware you can sit down there for a long time they know not neither will they understand they walk on in darkness why because they do not know the thoughts of God. So the devil can come and tell you it is the will of God for you to be a mediocre. It is the will of God for you to do ministry as if God did not call you. It is the will of God for you to fail. It is the will of God for death to sweep everyone in the family. And you say it's true. That ignorance is because you do not know who God is. So the word of God explains to us the thoughts and the intents of God. Are we blessed? Number three. The word of God is a revelation of his system of operation. Please pay attention. We've discussed three things now. That the word of God is God, an expression of himself. Number two. That the word of God is a revelation of his thoughts and his character. Now number three. The word of God is a revelation of his system of operation, his ways, his methodology. Psalm 25 from verse 4 and 5. 
Psalm 25 from verse 4 and 5. Show me thy ways, O God, he says. Teach me thy paths. Next verse. Lead me in thy truth and teach me. For thou art the God of my salvation. Unto thee will I wait all day long. He said, teach me thy ways. Teach me thy ways. Psalms 103 verse 7. Please give it to us quickly. Psalms 103 and verse 7. He made known his ways unto Moses. He made known his ways unto Moses. Now please look up. I had the privilege of enjoying a wonderful meal when we arrived. Wonderful meal. And by the way, it was, it was I think one day I will return here by myself and invite myself. Just not to come and preach. But to come and patronize the kind of wonderful meal and the juices that we have enjoyed. But now watch this. It's one thing for me to enjoy it. I don't know how it was made. I only know it was good. The trouble is, the day the person who made it is not there, I'm in trouble. If that person really wants to help me, more than giving me the food and the juices, they can call me to the kitchen and say, let me show you how it is made. Now I'm not afraid of my results because the secret of reproducing it is now with me. God does not only want to give you miracle signs and wonders. He wants to call you to the inner chambers of the spirit and say, let me show you how miracles happen. Let me show you how results happen in this kingdom. Listen, look up. Do you know why stories in the Bible are so long and every detail is captured? It's not just the result God wants you to see. He wants you to study how the results happen. The things that are written at four times, the Bible says, they are for our learning so that we through the comfort of scripture might find hope. And hope makes not ashamed. As a man of God, I can pray for you. Be healed, be blessed, may your church expand, may you increase. You will be afraid of that result and then you will not be able to mentor and raise others because you don't even understand the dynamics of that result. So the word of God teaches us the methodologies of the kingdom. Like a chef calling you into the kitchen and say, let me teach you how this mysterious food that you see, let me break it down. First, you start with water. Don't worry whether I'm right or wrong. Second, you start with whatever. Third, you start with this and then leave this for five minutes. Then you make it, make a few mistakes. He said, no problem, let's do again. They are not just teaching you to eat. They are teaching you how to cook well. There are women here, even if they want to cook for 1,000 people, you are not afraid because of mastery. You understand how to do this thing, you are not afraid. Listen to me. We become matured and we become masters in this kingdom. When we are able to handle the word of truth. When we understand the dynamics of how results happen in the kingdom. So if someone comes for counseling as a matured believer, not just a man of God. As a matured believer, you can immediately diagnose his problem. And you can recommend it like a doctor. When you are speaking to a doctor, doctor, I started shivering this morning. Then I had headache. Then joint pains. He starts laughing because there is mastery. He, has, he, he, he was not just taught how to administer drugs. He was taken to a class and shown that these symptoms mean this. So while you are talking, he can even be making a call while he's listening to you. That's how much he has gained mastery. And he will recommend a drug and not call you up to check up on you. He is sure that you'll be fine. Two days after taking that drug, you say, doctor, he said, don't worry, just keep taking it. And after five days, you are running around playing football. Mastery. When you understand this, someone can come and say, poverty is destroying my family. And now you are a blessing. You say, I know. Carry your pen and paper. Write the following scriptures. I know what is wrong. And I know how. We... You are not a blessing if you do not know the ways of God. You can't be able to help people in a methodical way. Mentorship is based on this body of truth that lifts believers. There is a methodical approach to the growth and the maturity of the saints. This is what doctrine is all about. The course curriculum that makes for the growth of the saints is called doctrine. Are you learning anything tonight? Yes. Apostle, 
I know God works miracles, but I don't know why I don't see it in my life. The word of God can teach you how miracles happen. Apostle, I know God favors, but I've never seen this favor in my life. The word of God says, come, don't look at the result. Let me show you how it happened. I know the word of God can impart faith, but I don't know how it is. Then he says, let me use a figure. Look unto Abraham, your father. Understudy him. Understudy Esther to learn favor. Understudy Abraham to learn faith. Understudy Elijah to learn prayer. There are portraits that lead to exact spiritual results. You can study them and learn. Apostle, what I have is not enough. I know that what I have is not enough. You go to the word of God. What did Jesus do with what is not enough? Number one, he gave thanks. So stop complaining. Any Anytime you complain about what is not enough, you have killed the potential for increase. Are you seeing how the word of God cultures us now? Oh, apostle, there's no, I don't have this enough. I don't, no, 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 no. Give thanks. Give thanks. Lord, I thank you that I even have the fees for one of my child. I know that I need for five of them. But you are the one who has given me this one. And I am grateful. And God says, this is for me. Now you are ready to turn your five loaf and your two fish to feed 5,000 people. It's a formula. So those who are thankful, dancing and celebrating God every time. There may not be anything at home and yet they are rejoicing. You see them testifying miracles upon miracles because they are engaging an exact spiritual formula. Please look at me. One of the major reasons why we press for the word of God is because we want to know how God operates. You are a man of God here. You are trusting God for increase maybe. In your, in your church, you are trusting God for increase greater souls. You go back. How did increase happen in the kingdom? The formula again. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw. Paul can plant, Apollo can water, but increase is exclusively of God. So the more Jesus is revealed and lifted in your life and in your congregation, then you see that he will begin to draw men. Are you seeing how this thing works? Question. Now that you are seated here, if you look at your life, you see the gaps in your results. You must go to the Bible. I am, I seem not to be prayerful. My prayer life seems to have died. Don't feel discouraged. You go to scripture, you search. Where did resurrection happen as far as someone's prayer life is concerned? I don't know if prayer is powerful. Go to scripture and find out. Two instances to show you the power of prayer. Number one, Isaiah 18, Hezekiah, who turned a verdict, God's own verdict. Nobody in that rendition was fake. The prophet was real, God was real, the verdict was true, yet prayer changed it. So is prayer powerful? Yes, sir. Next expression, Luke 18 from verse 1. He spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Sin 1. It talks about a wicked man. There was in a city a widow. A judge. May you never meet this kind of judge. A judge who does not fear God. You can't say God sent me to you. And does not regard men. You can't say this man said you should. No. And then the Bible now talks of a widow. A widow is a woman who had system of defense has been taken away. So it's contrasting two people to show you the power of prayer. She went to him and said, avenge me my adversary. And the Bible says for a time he would not. And then here's what the man said. By her continual coming, her importunity. He said, though I do not fear God nor regard man. But this woman will weary me. That means when you pray, there is an effect in the spirit. Even though you are not seen, the strongest of forces. When you are consistent in prayer, eventually. Bible talks about Elijah in James chapter 5 begin to read from verse 16 down that Elijah was a man of like passion but he prayed earnestly and changed climatic conditions it was not a parable it actually happened 
Now, by those scriptures, you now know that prayer is powerful. So when you go to pray, you are not hoping, will God answer? Can it really change this situation? The word of God has shown you how God works. You may be in a pit and a situation, maybe you are in debt, you are in trouble. Can God deliver? Go to the world to learn his ways. The worst kind of trouble that a man can find in this life is to be in the belly of a fish. And the Bible says there was a human being like that one day on earth as we are seated here. Someone was one day in the belly of the fish and he said, I will still not die. I can determine my destiny. What else is left when you are in the belly of the fish? For you, you've not entered. You are still breathing. You are still standing. And yet you are hopeless. A man is already in the belly of the fish. Digestion is about to start. Jonah said, fish, you are joking. You don't know who created me. I may not understand your digestive system. But I assure you, it's not me you will swallow. Jonah's story teaches us that there is nothing called hopeless. Nothing called hopeless. One of the three Hebrew boys who were thrown in fire and their chains were loosed and the appearance of the fourth was like the son of the living God. And the Bible says these were men who the fire had no power on. What of Acts chapter 12? You read about the story of Peter bound hand and chain after they killed James. But prayers was offered of the church unto God for him and Bible says a miracle began to happen an angel came and opened all those doors there is no situation called hopeless you see when you study scripture you learn the ways of God and you know that God is not only a mighty God but there is how he delivers you follow what they do at midnight Paul and Silas prayed they did not pray when they were outside of the prison. So there's no excuse for not praying. Lord, I'm depressed. Mm -mm. They prayed with chains. They even sang. You don't pray and sing when you are delivered. You pray and sing to be delivered. I'll sing unto the Lord. For he has triumphed gloriously. The horses and his riders have been thrown into the sea. That's the song of Miriam. When they saw the mighty hand of God, a pillar of cloud by day, fire by night, Red Sea at the instance of his word. And Miriam said, no, we can't just pass. Let us write a song after this experience. I will sing unto the Lord for he has triumphed gloriously. The horses and its riders have been thrown into the sea. So when someone says, your family will never rise, you look at him and sing the same song. I'll sing unto the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horses and its riders have been thrown into the sea. Word of God a manifestation of God himself the Word of God a revelation of the thoughts and the intents of God the Word of God as a revelation of his methodologies his ways the way results are produced in the kingdom the way influence happens the way prosperity happens. Apostle, I'm trusting God to lift me to rise to a higher level of influence for the sake of the kingdom. Go to the Bible then. How did influence happen? Study the life of Joseph. How did a prisoner suddenly become a prime minister? How did a slave girl called Hadassah suddenly become a queen? Study their lives. Find the keys for growth there. Listen. Every time you study scriptures to learn the ways of God, there are three things you are going to find. Number one, promises. Number two, principles. Number three, prophecies. You must find these three as you study scripture. Number one, again, promises. 
God's commitment towards you. Number two, principles. The keys of the kingdom that are responsible for the various dimensions of results that translate into our dominion. And then number three, prophecy. A foreknowledge of the things that will happen to give us hope and to give us assurance. Because if our hope is only in this life, the Bible declares that we are all men most miserable. Is God helping us tonight? Let me round up therefore as we pray by revealing maybe we can just take one for tonight there are four things four dimensions of power that are contained in the word of God the word of God is powerful but there are four dimensions of power at least contained in the word of God are you ready please we may just have one and then we'll pray is God blessing us tonight the first dimension of power that is contained in the word of God is the power to create. Hebrews 11 verse 3 To create from the earth's definition means to make something out of nothing. To create from the realm of the spirit means to transport realities and make them manifest here. The creative power of God's word. Hebrews 11 verse 3 through faith we understand that the walls were framed that means they had their physical expression by the word of God so that the things which were not made which were made seen were not made of things which do appear that means the raw material of the things we see today they came from the realm of the spirit The word of God has power to create. John chapter 1 and verse 3. John chapter 1 verse 3. We have looked at the word of what the word of God is. Now we're looking at the dimensions of power. There are four dimensions of power contained in the word of God. Number one is the power to create. John 1 3. All things. Someone say all things. One more time, please shout it. Say all things things your finance is part of all things listen to me your family is part of all things anything the word of God cannot make cannot be made anything the word of God cannot make cannot be made the Bible says all things were made by him and without him without him means outside of his influence was not anything made that was made so when they look at you and say how did you rise you know the answer the word of god there is the lifting power of his word listen to me in the name of jesus christ the son of the living god i speak to someone here the things that your destiny needs that have not yet manifested by the power of the word i decree and declare may you see them begin to appear in your life sit down the word of God can create it can make what has no business happening in your life to happen Saul had no business becoming a prophet Saul had no business receiving bread from visitors but a word came from God through a prophet you will be on your way going you will find three men holding two loaves of bread. They bought that bread to go home with it. But because a word is upon your life, they will bow to you and give you. The word of God can create. Listen. Strip every man of anything he has. His houses, cars, everything. But give him the word of God and say go. That man did not lose. As he's going from all over the earth, whatever his destiny needs, the word of God like a magnet. You don't pick needles one by one. That's too laborious. Find a powerful magnet. Pass it on the ground. Everything that is magnetic must follow it. That's what happens to you. When the word of God is upon your life, 
thank you. When the word of God is upon your life, immediately, listen carefully, everything at all that should be for life and godliness. So this is how it starts. Come, can I use you, my brother? Watch this. This gentleman may have come from a family with no advantage, a family with no lifting. Can anything good come out of this family? Then he sits down and as the word of God is coming, he does not even know what is happening to him. As he begins to move, favor meets him on the way, lift him, meets him on the way, destiny help us, meet him on the way. Three years of sitting with the word, he turns back and he says, where did you get them from? The word of God brought them. Looking for those things by themselves will be a journey of frustration. One thing is needful, Martha, Martha. You are worried and offended by this. One thing is needful. If you can sit at the master's table, the word of God exhibits magnetic properties. It's on you. And while you are roaming around, find a way of believing what I have to say. It's true. The word of God can change you. In ancient times, when fathers wanted to bless their children, they didn't bless them with physical things. They would, those they gave physical things to were those who they did not consider important. So they would say, okay, take this, take that. Then they'll call the sons inside and say, look, if I give you physical things, I'm a wicked father. I give you something, go. go. The person will go and return back with cattle return back with plenty the word of God everything that must appear in your life I'm standing in the name of Jesus and I'm speaking to you everything that you need for your spiritual life for your finances you have prayed you have done all you know to do I stand in the name of Jesus whose I am and who sent me here I declare some of you even before tomorrow may it appear in your life please sit down let's round up Colossians 1 16 that would be our final scripture for tonight please do not miss any of the sessions I'll be showing you what the power of God contains, the dimensions of power. And then we are going to be praying. Hopefully before the session, maybe the final session, we'll have the opportunity to pray for the sick, speak over our lives, and impart graces. An impartation is a transference of possibilities. It's part of the apostolic ministry that every time God grants a privilege to come across a region by the election of grace, there will be a deposit of divine realities so that men within the territory in greater levels will be on fire manifesting possibilities that will bring glory to the name of the Lord Colossians 1 16 please read with me everyone ready read one to read for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth visible and invisible whether they be mm -hmm, dominions principalities all things the creative power all things all things all things favor all things lifting all things supernatural manifestation all things let me tell you this if god decides that i'm creating a brand new possibility for you he can use anything even stones anything you've sat here tonight learning the ways of god first finding your passion to know god the more for some of you, more than the teaching tonight, the Lord is cultivating in you a hunger for spiritual things so that you will begin to love Him 
and you will begin to cry some of you will go back after this conference and you say Lord reveal yourself again to me I'm tired of playing religion I'm tired of just writing my exams by myself and marking the script there is only there is so much I need to know it's a holy provocation don't fight it it's challenging you those who bear fruit he prunes so that they will bear more fruit because hear me there are many destinies that are connected to you as you are listening to me and if you stop at this level there are destinies that will be destroyed so more than what you are hearing you must go back fight the spirit that has killed your prayer life fight the spirit that has killed your word life some of you your passion for the word here and there you may just watch a 10 minutes video on youtube go back now with a renewed passion i now see what the devil has been fighting my authority in the kingdom because it is through knowledge the just shall del be delivered we rise up in this kingdom by revelation please rise up on your feet in one minute i'd like you to just pray in the spirit and cry asking the lord for grace please just help those under the anointing we're wrapping up already for the night help them please help them whether you're an usher or not let someone just help them Are you praying someone pray you came for a conference you don't have to bring them out just help them so they don't enjoy themselves please pray prayer fire word fire afresh oh God upon my life is someone praying Prayer fire, word fire. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, please listen to me. Our time is up. I have just about three minutes here and we're done. Before we pray the second prayer and I speak over your life, you are here. And you came here for this conference of the balcony following online or here in the main auditorium you are saying apostle whilst i heard you preach the holy ghost began to speak to me that i must take the issue of my salvation seriously that you've never genuinely made a decision for the lord jesus christ there are others who are saying apostle i remember giving my heart to the lord but as it stands my life has gone haywire I need a genuine commitment I'm going to count one to four for time's sake wherever you are run like there's fire on the mountain and come and stand here one two don't be ashamed run run to Jesus It gives us a new beginning. Apostle, I'm not sure if I'm saved or not. Join them. Join them. Join them quickly. Join them quickly. Your life is about to change. For God so loved the world, the Bible says, He proved that love by giving. He's a giver. Love gives. I have decided to follow Jesus. No. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like, 
this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing jesus i'll see you again bye